Hey guys, Gun Guy Mexicano here, and today, as you can see from the intro, I'm making an EDC video. So I tend to make this video once a year. When I first started making these videos, I just found it interesting or I wanted to see what I would change from year to year, what things I would stop using and what I would swap them out for. So uh, if you've seen some of my past videos, you've known that uh, I carried primarily my Ruger LCP2 and 380 ACP for a while, for a few years. And uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this firearm. I, I'd still use it, actually, as a matter of fact. Uh, it's, it's nice and thin. It's small. It's light. And uh, actually, when I uh, work out or go for a jog or walk, I tend to prefer something smaller and lighter. So I'll take something like my Kershaw Shuffle and a small flashlight like this uh, G19 from Coast. So this will be my ADC, for example, uh, to go for a jog or something like that. Uh, for the rest of the time... Uh, when I go to work, say if I'm going to travel or uh, any other time really, uh, I'll go with the stuff that you see here on the table. Uh, I've used this belt before with uh, my LCP2, with my Glock 26, 27, even the Glock 19. It's a lighter belt, uh, but I felt that it works still very well even though it's a lighter belt with uh, these belt loops. And I'll explain a little more on how I came on this uh, holster setup as well. So. Three things that basically don't change very much from year to year is uh, some kind of wallet, a phone, and and keys, obviously, right? I don't think anybody leaves their home without those, those things. But uh, I try to reduce what's in my wallet as much as I can every year and then miserably fail, right? We, we add little pieces of paper and, and uh, discount cards that we almost never use and coupons and stuff. And uh, yeah, it just grows and grows and grows and grows. And then we end up with like something like this right now mid-year. Uh, it started much thinner than this, but that's where we're at now. Uh, this phone's actually not the phone that I carry or that I use. This is my Mexican uh, uh, phone, my, my Mexican number. The one that I'm actually uh, filming with right now is the phone that I carry most of the time. Um, if you guys travel to Mexico or you know much anything much about Mexico is that uh, you kind of need a, a Mexican cell phone number for like uh, opening bank accounts and doing certain things. Uh, that require a Mexican cell phone, specifically a cell phone number. So uh, I carry both of these phones, but the Google Pixel 6 Pro is the one that I'm recording with, and it records great video. For anybody that cares or is interested, that's what I'm using most of the time. Uh, I did switch to this blade here. Uh, it was a gift, and uh, I liked it. It's the Kershaw 1987. This is called the RG Tactical 3.0. Uh, I, I like it. It's a blade, right? It's sharp and it opens boxes and cuts tape. It's got a nice uh, pocket clip and uh, it's got that Kershaw Speed Safe assisted open. So it opens nice and quick and it's sharp. That's what I want from a knife. It's pretty much all I'll have to say about a blade, right? Um, I started using this uh, flashlight. It's cool because I, I also I'm not sure if I had mentioned it. I'm pretty sure I haven't, but I used to be a correctional officer and for the time that I was, uh, we use Saber Red, as a matter of fact, as our OC spray. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, it depended on my life for the time. My life was dependent upon that OC spray for the time that I worked in that position. So I thought, why not use it uh, outside, right? Outside of work. So this is what I use. As a matter of fact, it takes these uh, replacement cartridges. When you buy these replace replacement cartridges, they come with this top part that you can use standalone. But you just remove this top part and then you use the cartridge refill. These tend to have maybe a couple years shelf life. So after that you should, you know, replace it or toss it out. Or if you happen to use it. Um, also has a belt clip. Uh, it has a nice feature here that's got a like a little locking or a little uh, tab that you have to lift cover. So that you don't accidentally press it or depresses it uh, inside of your pocket. Especially if, like you use it like I do when you go jogging or walking or working out. And of course, it's a flashlight. It has uh, an 800 uh, lumen light that can be reduced to, I think, about 250 or 300 lumens. And it also has a, a strobe feature. So I think it's always a good idea to have a less than lethal option, which is exactly what this is here. And uh, with an effective range of about 10 feet, 10 to 12 feet, uh, it's a good idea to carry something like this if you're carrying a firearm. It's rare, very rare. You guys know this statistically that you'll need to use uh, lethal force. So it's not a bad idea to have something like this uh, on your person as well. So we move on to the firearm, right? The, the, the most important thing. So real quick, I'll let you guys see that I did safety check before I started the video, but I'll let you guys see as well. 
verify inside the chamber. Uh, I know you guys can't see, but I can. Uh, there is no round in the chamber. So, uh, this started off, like I had mentioned before, as a dedicated uh, winter carry for me. I, I plan to use this during the winter and then switch back to something smaller. I just enjoyed it or I liked carrying it so much that I kept it uh, throughout the rest of the time that uh, I've been using it up until today. And uh, it started off uh, me carrying it without the compensator and I'll explain why I ended up leaving the compensator on. But the first thing that I that I put on it was a, uh, a weapon light. So the, the light that I have on right now as you guys can see is a Surefire X300U. It's a very uh, popular common light. 1000 lumen uh, weapon light and then I swapped out of course the uh, sights so I went with the Ameriglow uh, blacked out rear and the orange uh, fiber optic with a tritium insert in the middle and uh, then for uh, the red dot I went with the hollow sun 509T this is the one with uh, the titanium body enclosed emitter uh, red dot I can't say also enough good things about this optic uh, it's very easy to use. I like a lot that you can change the battery uh, using this side tray. You don't have to remove or take the optic off to be able to put your new battery in and then re-zero. Re You're going to have to go to the range and re-zero. Uh, yeah, it's just an impressive uh, optic all around. Uh, so going back to the compensator, okay? So I had placed it on the pistol and I liked it. I liked uh, the reduced felt recoil from it. But one, one problem that I had with it is that this particular uh, compensator doesn't work like most so uh, this compensator is not attached to the firearm in a traditional sense that it would be with maybe the the barrel or maybe attached to the slide somehow or maybe on uh, on the rail on the receiver or on the the lower of the pistol this rides on a on the, on the guide rod <laughs> if I could speak on the guide rod with a spring, as you can see, it moves forward. So the way it's supposed to work is that during uh, firing, the slide moves rearward, the compensator is supposed to be pushed forward, and if you guys will pay attention in physics class, <laughs> you'll know that two opposing masses moving in opposite directions should cancel out. So that's, that's the theory of how it's supposed to work. And you do feel, like I'm saying, uh, it's not a huge drastic uh, thing that most people think that they're, they're gonna feel, but you do feel uh, reduced uh, recoil impulse which was interesting at first and then uh, once I got used to it I started to appreciate it so as you saw it moves right it moves freely from the firearm so one thing that would freak me out or, or didn't allow me to carry it with confidence is that when I place it inside an open-ended uh, holster for example I bought a Bravo holster that I kind of customized to have it open-ended I would I would worry that when I would unholster that compensator would get stuck inside of the holster and then obviously now I have no gun. I have no way to defend myself and I'm trying to draw, especially if you're drawing in a very close proximity to someone's trying to attack you. Now you can't take it out because this is stuck inside the holster, right? So I found a gentleman that has a company, see uh, on the inside of this holster is the name. It is uh, strike80holster.com. Uh, actually, Strike Industries are the ones that the companies po pointed me to this gentleman. He's uh, it's a veteran-owned business, as a matter of fact, and uh, he made this holster specifically, developed it specifically for the use with that compensator. So when you actually place it inside the holster, uh, he molded it well open first off, and then he molded it around very carefully, very specifically for the compensator, so that there's no drag on that compensator and it can't get snagged. So that was really huge for me. And once I found this holster, which wasn't cheap, but anything that's quality, as you guys well know, isn't cheap. Um, yes, so that's when I started carrying it with the holster. I'm sorry, with the holster, with uh, the compensator. So yeah, that was a big deal, finding this holster. Um, another thing is that it came with a uh, outside the waistbands uh, attachment, which I didn't mind. It just uh, printed a little bit more and it wasn't as concealable. So I ended up getting uh, belt loops and attaching it this way so that I could uh, carry it inside the waistband. And it just became that much more concealable. Uh, so yeah, uh, at first, like I'm saying, it, it just bothered me a little bit that I couldn't carry this gun with the compensator. I found the holster. I was able to reliably uh, draw the pistol without any kind of issues. And that's when I felt comfortable enough to start carrying it with the compensator. 
obviously the, the first and the main thing was to make sure that the ammo, the carry ammo, which is uh, this Hornady American Gunner, this is the uh, 124 grain XTP bullet, this is plus P ammo. Uh, the very first thing that I wanted to make sure is that, that this worked with the compensator, that I mean it didn't have any issues uh, feeding it uh, reliably, that it wasn't going to make it uh, maybe extract correctly or just generally work the way it should be, the way it should uh, should work. So once I noticed that the ammo was working perfectly fine, then that, that next thing was the, the holster, right? I got that, you know, comfortably working for me and that's pretty much the result. This is the pistol that, like I'm saying, uh, I've been using since and I probably won't be changing for a while unless something really, really uh, <laughs> nice comes out that's just uh, offers me more than what I have right now with a, a Glock 17. So there it is, that's my uh, EDC. Uh, one thing I guess I forgot to mention, and some people might might care, for the flashlight, uh, it does use uh, CR123A batteries, which are pretty common, I mean, at least I can find them in most Walmarts and uh, grocery, grocery stores. Uh, but besides that, I think I covered everything else. Uh, if you guys have any other questions uh, or comments, of course, you guys are always welcome to chat with me in the comment section. That's probably my favorite part of make, about making videos, to be honest. So, uh, like always, uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace out.